Hello everybody, Chuck, PowerAddicts.com. And here's my test bed that I mentioned in one of my other videos, 1991 Jeep Wrangler YJ. 4.0 liter, 5 speed, inline 6. I rescued this poor thing from a 14 year old kid that used it as a farm toy. This is going to be the test bed for the subject of many of my videos coming up. That and my, I've got a uh, Yamaha SX650. I've got my Shadow, 2003 Shadow Spirit. And a few other miscellaneous toys that'll probably be a subject of a video or two. But today, we're doing an oil change. I know some people that may be an elementary thing. There's some people who have loved learning how to do these things on their own. So hey, really, honestly, there is no such thing as a video that's too simple. I'll be doing some fabrication videos. How to weld up the bumpers. You now I got a rear bumper. I've gotten progress on this thing, but really haven't made a whole lot of progress lately. But anyway, back to the uh, subject at hand. Doing an oil change. Some people, it's an elementary thing. Some people love to know how to do it. I want to show you how to do it. So therefore, people don't have to go pay mechanics high dollar money just to do an oil change. There's no point. I have another website. It's called homemadeidea.com. Many times, if you go to that website, it's H-O-M-E, M-A-D-E, I-D-E-A, homemadeidea.com. And there is a link to, set, uh, to where you can um, download coupons. That Valvoline bottle right there, $5 off coupon at Walmart. Got to save money when you can. Times are hard, people. Anyway, got the filter here, Wix 51085. Let's get started and show you where the filter's out on this thing. Way down there, see that Fram filter? Well, I've already changed the oil, oil on this thing one time. Why I use the Fram filter, I have no earthly idea. I'm not really a Fram fan. I took a uh, filter apart one time, a Fram filter apart one time. I've seen that uh, paper bypass valve inside of it, and I was not impressed ever since then. But I was in a hurry, and I was at Walmart grabbing some stuff, and I knew that was the part number. I grabbed it and went with it. Anyway. I'm a little smarter now. Got a Wix filter. Wix makes a very good filter. So I'm gonna get in position underneath the truck here, underneath the Jeep, and I'm gonna show you guys the drain, drain of the oil. Be right back. All right, everyone, let's get the oil out of this thing. Whatever size wrench fits your car, and the process of changing oil is pretty much the same amongst all different cars. The oil filters or the drain plugs may be in different locations, but I mean, it's pretty much the same process. And that was a problem, this oil being a bit dirty. This poor Jeep right here has been abused. This second oil change since I've owned it. driveway in the morning I have to. And yuck. Anybody ever get the clamp it thing going through the head? Black gold touch T. Okay, bad joke, the only one. Alright, basically I can lay here and look this drain out and be absolutely no fun. And I'm sure the video wouldn't be no fun watching it on YouTube either. So what I'm gonna do is I will catch you guys in a moment once it's ready to get drained out and we'll step on to the next process. We'll be right back in a bit. Thank y'all. Back in a bit. Alright, the oil's pretty much drained out of the oil pan now. Well, we got some drips going on every now and then, but if you really want to be patient before you press stop draining, well, you got more time in your hands than I do. Just wipe this right here off good. While oil is draining, cleaned it, the oil pan plug. Put it back in. Wrench. Hey, 
y'all can hear my creeper squeaking around. Alright. It's not ridiculous tight, but it's good and snug. You don't want it too awfully tight, and you don't want to strip the threads in your oil pan, because trust me, that becomes a nightmare trying to fix that. Alright. Oil filter's next. Let me reposition, and we'll go to the oil filter. Right back. Alright, it's time for the oil filter. I've already kind of broke it loose a little bit because it's kind of hard to do that, break it loose and uh, hold the camera at the same time. And you just simply unscrew it. And make sure your drain pan is in line with your oil pan before you take it completely off. Otherwise, well, <laughs> you can imagine, it'd be a mess. And I'm making sure that it's properly just that and I get my arm up here too. Yes, I'm laying under the Jeep on a creeper. And there it goes. See the old yuck. And just continue taking them off. Turn the filter upside down in the drain. Right there. The way that the filter drain out of all the holes. People, uh, your old used oil, most of the time your auto zones, your O'Reilly's, several places have ways you can discard your old oil for free. They have a big old tank in the back. You just walk up back there and weld with them with you or however they, their policy is for their individual store. Walk in back there, pour it in that big old tank thing they have, walk out. Don't pour it out by the fence, don't do all kinds of stuff. Come on, people. You got critters living around you. Got you can have squirrels, rabbits, or if you live out in the country, it could be deer, whatever. Not to mention contaminating water. Save the creators, people. Come on. Recycle your oil. Or at least dispose of it properly, not on the ground. As far as your oil filter, wrap it up in plastic. And if you live in the city, you know you got to put in your general waste. Make sure it's drained as much as possible. Wrap it up in plastic so you don't make a major mess inside your cat, uh, can. In your trash can. And if you live out in the country, well, I don't know what to tell you, figure it out. Go into the city, find a big dumpster somewhere, but wrap it up in plastic so it don't make a mess. Okay, we'll look at that back up here. I got some sunlight shining on this thing, kind of like whitening out the camera. Okay, you see there it's coming. They're dripping. Yeah, make sure your surfaces is clean. Make sure the gasket didn't come off the filter and stuck to the block here. Alright. I'm coming out for a new Jeep and we'll get the new oil filter ready, prep it up, show you how to do that. Back in a moment. Alright, but I got the oil filter about ready to go on. You can see right, down, right there that shiny, that's the oil. Actually, I went ahead and kind of pre-filled my filter. I don't know, it's probably about halfway full or something like that. It's a debate as to whether people believe you should or shouldn't, should, whether it's necessary or not. Me personally, I feel like it's very helpful because think about it when you turn that motor over how much time those bearings get with no oil on them decreases the life on them you know, significantly so if you can help keep oil on those bearings as much as possible it don't take but a moment or two to fill a little bit of oil up in that filter get about halfway full or if you want to be patient fill it all the way full but you got to lose some oil when you put it on depending on how the filter goes on so this helped minimize some of the spillage too. All right, notice right here on the gasket, there's a little bit here and there where I was putting oil in it. What you want to do is put your finger right there and just wipe around that gasket.
and what that does later on, maybe you go to, for your next oil change, you go to change that filter, that gasket will not stick to the block. If you don't put a little bit of oil around that, the gasket will stick to the block, and well, it's not too hard to come off, but it just kind of saves you a little bit of headache. All right, let's get this filter put on. Let me, I'll be right back. All right, y'all know so I'm doing this from up top this time. The reason I did it from the bottom, taking the filter off, is just so I could lay the old filter down inside the drain can quick, so it wouldn't make as much of a mess. But this Jeep block is pretty easy to change, the, uh, put the filter on from the top. Like I said, I've got part of it filled up, I've uh, got the gasket surface all clean, down on the block. Now let's put this baby on. The thing it is, even though it's got oil in, if you get it on there and get it spinning, you'll minimize your loss. Keep it moving to bumps up on the block and you'll minimize a lot of your oil loss. There's definitely a trick. You'll get the hang every time or two. Alright, I've got the filter kind of butted up against the block right now. I'm going to wipe that. There's a little bit of oil on it. I'm going to wipe it off so I can grip it. And Because it's kind of hard to tighten it up where it needs to be. So I'm going to wipe the filter off, tighten it up, and be right back with you. Okie doke. Filter done. And you notice too, I put the drain pan down below also because uh, a little bit of the filter, the oil coming out of the filter, you know it's going to spill down on the concrete. So I try to minimize my mess as much as possible. So if you notice also, I got the part number facing up. I tend to try to do that. So whenever I tighten it up and it stops to a certain point, and I try to get you know where I know where it's tight, the seal's good, and you know, where it's going to seat good, and get tight seal. But the part number being face up is just one of those things to like, you know, it's time to change oil, but I can't remember my part number from my filter. This way I can pop the hood, oh yeah, it's a 51085 Wix number, so I can, I don't have to climb, no, crawl under it, don't have to walk up to the parts store and say, you know, hey, uh, hey young guy there behind the counter, or hey young lady, I've seen a lot of ladies working the uh, auto parts here lately. Would you, uh... You know, look up a filter for me. Well, instead, I could walk up and say I need a Wix 51085 or whatever number it fits your particular vehicle. But just one of those little quirks makes my life easier, quick, and you know, hey, you think you do make your life a little easier to plan ahead and set it up like that? It's a good thing. All right, let's get some oil in this bat. Let's get some oil in this old country girl and get her ready to fire up. I goofed. I need to go get my funnel. Be right back. Let me guess. Y'all was expecting like a real funnel, right? Uh, joke. I tend to try to use what I got. You know, just minimize spending money, stuff like that. That's an old oil bottle. No babbling oil bottle from who knows what oil change from how long back. I just cut the bottom off of it. It tends to fit down inside the necks of these uh, valve covers of different you know, cars and such. If it's not inside them good, you can drop them in. You stay put. Don't matter how hard you pour the oil into it, it don't move. Like them. I take this right here after I get through changing oil. And I use this when I wipe out the inside of it. I got a little place I stick it to keep from the crud getting on the inside of it. Yeah, the outside's a little dirty, but as long as the inside's clean, that's what matters. Alright. Now, the oil. Here we got Valvoline 1040. I uh, shot a little blurb out a moment ago about another website that I tinker with a lot. It's called homemadeidea.com. A singular homemade idea, not S, just singular. Um, I got coupons on that site where if you have partnered with uh, coupons.com, if you get on that homemade idea website and go to the right, you'll see up top, you'll see this little. Um, Coupon icon thing to the right, you click on it and it'll take you to where coupons browse through and browse through and food coupons mostly, but more times than not, you can get a five dollar off coupon taking it to Walmart, uh, redeemable at Walmart now. Five dollar off coupon off this size jug right here. Typically, this right here was like seventeen dollars, I believe it was at Walmart here near Nashville, Tennessee. And that five dollars off, we knocked it down to twelve bucks. I bought two. My coupon is about to expire, but there's more on there right now. As I checked last night, um, but I went ahead and bought two of them. 
because I got to change all of this and I've got a uh, 90 GMC full size truck that I'm going to change all in it also. So homemadeidea.com, I've got coupons there where you can get $5 off that oil right there. Go get it. All right, I'm going to pour some oil in this thing. I'll be right back with you in a moment. Hey, everybody. All right, I got the oil in this thing. And bear in mind that this is a 4-liter uh, Jeep motor. They take six quarts of oil, so I've dumped that whole big jug up in there. Now, you've seen that one little... Well, I take that back. I poured out a small bottle in there first, and I'm dumping this great big jug in there. And checking the oil. I had to start it because, remember the oil filter? I put oil in it, but I didn't fill the filter all the way up. So, so therefore, there is a bit of volume of that filter that did not have anything in it. So I started the motor, let it run for a moment. Now we're going to check the oil. Filter's full where I started it. Let's sit there for a moment. See, it's just, here's the safe line. And there is where the oil line is. It's about a finger width, something like that. So it's probably, I don't know, guessing half a quarter, something like that. So now we're going to top it off a little bit. Wipe off the dipstick. Top it off some. Okay, make sure my dip is clean. Hey, there you gotta give it a moment for the oil to run from the top of the motor down. It should be close enough by now. There it is. We're good. Alright everyone, uh, thank you for watching my video. This is how to do an oil change. And as I go along, as I have to do maintenance each vehicle, whichever, I will be doing more videos as I go. See more cool stuff at www.poweraddicts.com. Y'all have a great day. This is Chuck. I'm out. See y'all.